This is the fifth preseason football training tape for the Eastern Football Conference. It will be the final preseason training tape of the 2016 season. I plan on doing a few during the season, but uh, again, we have games starting on the 26th of August for Week 0 teams, so this will be the last preseason one, and this one is going to focus solely on targeting. Uh, as you know from your meetings with your rules interpreters, targeting is a point of emphasis not only by the WPIL but the PIAA this year, and uh, we want to make sure that as officials we're all calling this the same way across the board throughout the whole season because you know part of targeting is if we deem it to be flagrant enough it could be an injection. So during this video I'm going to show you plays where we want injections called and plays where there are just good clean football hits that are not targeting. So hopefully by watching this video you'll be able to decipher between what is a target, what is targeting with an ejection, and finally what is a good clean football hit. Okay, uh, in the rule book, targeting is defined as an act by any player who takes aim and initiates contact against an opponent above the shoulders with the helmet, forearm, hand, fist, elbow or shoulders uh, and then we have a uh, we also want to keep in mind the illegal personal contact illegal helmet foul where uh, illegal helmet contact is uh, contact that may be judged by the game officials as a flagrant act acts that may be judged to be flagrant include but are not limited to illegal helmet contact against an opponent lying on the ground so that would be a runner who is down or, def or another player who is down and uh, a defender or an offensive player comes in and just spears them with their helmet. Illegal helmet contact against an opponent being held up by other players. So runners with uh, forward progress stopped and uh, you know, once the forward progress stopped uh, the play should be blown dead but even if it isn't and we have a driving the runner being stopped and driven back if a uh, defender comes in and contacts with it with his with his or her helmet into the runner's helmet that is a legal helmet contact and again these are these can be judged flagrant fouls with disqualification and the final one is a legal helmet to helmet contacts against a defenseless opponent and a defenseless opponent is not well defined in the NFHS rule book but uh, I'll give you my my dis my description of the defenseless opponent a defenseless opponent is a wide receiver who has not yet become a runner Okay, you have a wide receiver going over the middle. He may have caught the ball. He may have not caught the ball. He doesn't have a chance to, to protect himself, and he gets blown up in the head area with a, with a helmet to contact. That's one instance of a defenseless player. Another instance of a defenseless player is what I mentioned earlier about a runner whose forward progress is stopped. He is defenseless. He's getting driven backwards. A runner who is on the ground and is down is defenseless. A passer who has just thrown the ball is defenseless until the uh, quarterback and or other passer, if it happens to be a halfback pass, can defend himself. A punt returner who has just caught the ball. There's not a time element where you would consider it a fumble. You would still consider it a muff. That punt returner is defenseless. And uh, I know this is a lot to be thrown at you, but what we're going to be we're going to show you is the zone that we want to see the contact to occur for it to be legal. We want to have it between the shoulders. You know, think of an area above the belt and below the shoulders. That is the target area we want for the players to be aiming towards for these to be legal hits. Another defenseless player is it, it's just a, a player in pursuit who receives a blindside block, who cannot see the block coming. That doesn't mean we can't have a good hard hit in the torso area. But any time we start going up above the head and have the helmet contact or the target to the head, those are plays where we got to get out of the, We got to get these plays out of the game. Um, too many kids are getting concussed. The kids are bigger, faster, stronger. The hits are bigger, and uh, we have to protect the kids and protect the game. And it's our job as officials to do this. And it's also our job as officials to educate the players and the coaches. If you see a play where a kid makes a good hit 
and it's a good hard hit just go up to them and say hey that's a great job hitting them in the torso that was you know that's just a good clean hit we want to see educate and be able to explain the situation and lastly I'm going to explain is when we have a targeting foul or a legal contact foul that we deem flagrant as officials I want to walk you through the process on how we go about talking as a crew prior to making the ejection because what I don't want to happen I do not want one person on his own making determination that it should be an ejection he should be able to at least confer with one other person who should have some information prior to having the ejection if that other person does not have information that is pertinent or will overrule the official that wants to make the ejection then we will have the ejection but again I will support if if the if it's involving the safety of the players and you feel it's flagrant enough for an injection, I will support the officials in these instances. So uh, we'll, we'll get, get to the plays right now and talk about what is and is not targeting. All right, this first play, we've already uh, taken a look at it at a previous uh, training tape, but I want to go over this play again because it shows not only uh, a good play where we have targeting with which should be a disqualification by the defender in this case, but it also shows good mechanics by the field judge and uh, we can talk about how this play should be should be handled as far as talking to other officials and reporting this to the referee. So what we're going to see is the quarterback's going to throw a long pass down the bottom side of the screen, and you'll see the safety come over, and he's not even playing the ball. He just goes in, launches, and blows up the receiver above the shoulders. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so first things first, we have the ball in the air, and we have a receiver who is just looking back at the ball. This is a perfect right example right here, and the ball is up here, of a defenseless player. Right now this receiver is defenseless, he's looking back towards the ball and what you will see coming from this side of the, this side of the screen is a safety or a free safety, strong safety coming in. He has zero intention to do anything but punish this receiver and frankly these are plays, this is the exact play we need to get out of the game. Okay, And what we do is we get a great call by the, so, uh, the field judge at the bottom of the screen for targeting. and you know he does a great job because he's playing this matchup right here he has this matchup that's his key he's focused in on it but he can also get help from the line judge who's going to turn and run once that ball goes in the air and as a line judge what you want to do is you want to take a look and see you know your side judge is working that a field judge is working that matchup you want to look for a player from the side to come in and who's going to blow up this play and get a target so we'll play it in fast speed and you'll see this guy come in and blow him up above the head and then we have him taunting so we have two fouls here right now we have a target and we have a taunt on number 15 okay so let's let's run this back here and let's let's talk about how this player could not have been called for targeting this player lowers his target zone to here and hits him we definitely do not have targeting we may have hitting a player out of the play because the ball is so far overthrown but uh, you know I'm not going to make the judge on this matter this is nearly for targeting but you can see you will see him come down crouch and launch and try to punish this receiver and then stand over him and taunt so I know this is a big play and I know as a as a free safety these are the hits you want to do to separate the receiver from the ball you can still make big hits but lower that target zone into here okay and as officials if we call this play just so we have a flag on this play field judge throws a flag so what do we do here as a field judge what's running through my head right now is I want I have targeting with a disqualification so I'm gonna go to either my uh, whoever the line judge on the bottom of the screen is and say hey um, I have targeting with disqualification. Do you have any information that would take me out of disqualifying this player? Because I am sure this is a target, and I'm sure this is I'm sure this is a flagrant act. But if you tell me something else, then we can have a discussion. If that line judge or on the other side of the screen, that side judge has says no, I don't have any information that would uh, that that would disagree with you. That's when you go into the to the 
referee and say, I have a personal foul with targeting number 15 on the defense with an, a disqualification. So that, that's how I want this play handled from an officiating standpoint. I don't want one person making the decision autonomously to throw this player out. Have a discussion with at least one other member of your crew because an ejection in, in high school is a serious offense. That person is not only out for this week, but is also out for the following. So just make cover your, all your bases. Again, this is a target. I would fully support a disqualification in this case. One more time. Okay, play number two is a, another example of targeting. This, however, this player is not defenseless. There is still significant contact above the shoulders, which would warrant targeting and injection on this play. What I want you to do is we're going to take a look at this player right here. He's going to receive a middle screen coming into the middle and then cutting up the field. And you're going to see a safety come in again and he lowers his head to do nothing but punish this opponent. He hits him so hard that the offensive player's helmet comes off. Okay, so let's take a look at this play and discuss what we have. So we have number 20 who received the pass. He becomes a runner right now and boom, gets blown up. So the player we're going to take a look at that does the targeting is right here. And who should I think could pick this up? Okay, we have a we have a wing official down here. Looks like the line judge could help pick this up. The at this point the referee is very concerned right here with the quarterback, so he's going to want to stay with him because right now he could get a shot above the above the shoulders or a roughing the passer call. We have, you know, we have a wing official looking right in here. We have an umpire who's focused here. He may be able to help out. He may be the second person who you have that discussion with about the target. And the other person that would have some information is this deep wing because that number 20 was his initial key. So he's going to follow him and notice that he's going in for a screen and he's going to watch this blocking up front. But at the same time, he should be able to have some information but so we'll slow this down I'm sorry I picked the wrong person this this person right here is the person that we have the targeting he comes in lowers his head and puts the crown of his helmet right on the face mask of that runner so let's talk about this foul we have targeting we have an ejection and we have a runner whose helmet came off due to a foul. That runner gets to stay in the game because the foul caused the helmet to come off. I would expect the flag to come from someone, hopefully the wing official down here or maybe one of the of the umpire or field judge at the bottom of the screen. Again, have a discussion because this is an ejectable offense. This is a play again. If this player comes in and lowers his target zone to here or here or it's a tackle, lowers the target zone from here down to here he can make a tackle which would serve the same purpose of probably separating the runner from the ball and we would not have targeting so players coaches we gotta lower the target zone here but again that's a targeting offense it's also a legal helmet contact whichever you want to occur it's a flagrant foul which I would want the person tossed and disqualified from the game. Alright, on this next play I'm going to show you a good, good clean hit. This is not targeting, this is a good clean football hit, it's a hard hit. We're going to take a look at this, uh, we're going to take a look at this linebacker right here and we're also going to keep on an eye on this player right here who's going to come and hit the, hit this linebacker who as I'll draw on the screen 
scrapes across, tries to make the tackle, he comes in, hits him clean right in the torso. And this is the exact targeting area that we want the coaches to teach the players to go after. Uh, the offensive guy does not go after the head, does not go above the shoulders, does not go below the waist. It is a good clean hit that occurs in this area and that's what we want to see as officials. So right now, let's officiating wise, this person is the headlinesman's key, so he should be watching that even as the runner comes around the side. So let's take a look at this play. We have a quarterback sneak around the side, and you'll see number tw you'll see him number twenty one coming in the picture right here, and we'll see the defender who he hits coming in the picture right here good clean hit. Let's run that back. Good clean hit right in the chest in the torso area. We have a flag but we should not have a flag for targeting on this play. But what we should have a flag for is number 21 stands over and taunts the opponent. Uh, there is zero tolerance for taunting. Um, you know, We read a sportsmanship message to the coaches and the captains prior to the game for a reason. Um, you know, I know football is a violent game and it is a game filled with emotion, but what I would tell the coaches and tell the officials, let the kids celebrate with their players. Do not let them show up their opponents or demean them like they do here. But again, good clean hit, not targeting, but we do have but we do have taunting. Okay? We could take a look from the wide view here, you'll get the same you'll get the same look. And you'll see number 22 coming around right here. And you'll see the person coming in for the block right here. Again, good clean hit right into the torso. And uh, not targeting. This is a good clean play. Alright, this next play is another example of not targeting. Okay, we, we're going to want to take a look at, I believe, um, bear with me for a second, this player here, and I think it is this player right here. If I could get the drawing to work. But the, this player and this player, the, the play develops to the bottom of the screen and then comes back up to the top. And uh, as you'll see, there's a good clean hit, but again, the the target is in the shoulder area. I'm sorry, let's not use that word. The hit is in the shoulder area. It's not above the shoulder area. It's a big hit. It knocks the defender off his feet. But at the same time, it's a clean hit. Okay, I'm going to run this play in slow motion here because uh, unfortunately the sound is on with this uh, one and you probably won't be able to hear me talk over the sound of the crowd. So what you can see here is the quarterback running over here. and when when you have plays as an official when the when you have a runner that goes one way and reverses to the other this is where your antenna should go up for a big blind side hit you can see his eyes right now eyeing this guy up because he is looking in here at the ball and he this guy right here is licking his chops cuz he's going to knock his head off okay so what you'll see is him come around good clean side block from the side, knocks him off his feet. I mean, you know, you can't get much harder than that, but it's in the shoulder area, doesn't hit him in the head, doesn't hit him above the shoulder. It's very clean. It's not a block in the back. It's not a target. So this is another way that you can see a nice clean hit. That's not a target. It's in the, it's in the torso target zone. This is not a play we want called targeting. This is not a play we want called for an excessive hit. It's a good clean hit from the side. And it is, is another good example of not targeting. All right, for this next play, here's a, uh, another example of targeting. Um, you, as you can see, the player we're gonna look at, um, this, this player up here, this tight end here is gonna do a drag route across the middle. 
uh, receive a pass and then behind the play uh, you, you, you'll see a player get blown up and you, you will see that it's a uh, targeting case here so he's running down the sideline here and what do you see right here let's back this up just a little bit you see this player right here is headhunting He's coming into the play. He's probably eyeing him up. He could be eyeing this player up. He's definitely not going to hit this player because if he hits him, that player, he's got a block in the back. So what do we have here? How are we going to officiate this play? We have a wing official over here, whether it's the L or the H, usually on this case with the bottom of the screen is the L. He's officiating the runner and what's going on right here. And even though the act is going to take place on one of these two players, the line judge right now is so close to the play that he's focusing on the runner who's tight to the sideline. He's not going to see the, uh, the, the target that's going to happen. The person who's going to be the, of the most help right here is this field judge right here. Because he's looking right down the line. He's, he has this guy in his field of vision right here. And you'll see him come in and blow that player. I mean, you could see the moment the impact happens, it's clear to the head. It's a clear target, and it's a clear you know, ejectable offense. Okay, these are the hits. He does not have to hit this player in the head. Okay, he can hit this player right here as we saw in previous examples and cause the same effect of getting this player out of the play. Okay, so players, any players or coaches watching this lower, have your kids lower their target zone into the chest area. As you can see right here, He blows him up right to the face, and he's and the defender, I mean the offensive player is definitely targeting the defender's head, head right there just to punish. Again, targeting an ejectable offense. Field judge, if you get it with the flag, I'd walk into the line judge and say I've targeting uh, with a disqualification, and you know have the line judge talk to you if you don't feel it's flagrant enough, you know keep the kid in the game I will support you if you decide to throw him out all right here's another situation where we do not have targeting we have a good clean hit that separates the uh, wide receiver from the ball it, it it causes the same purpose as if the if the defender would target high minus the penalty you know it's it's a good clean play by the defense so we're gonna have the quarterback who's going to roll down towards the bottom of the screen if I can get the uh, arrows working correctly he's gonna to roll to the bottom of the screen as, as and you can see number seven who just went out in his route he's the tight end right here he's gonna be the receiver of interest that goes gonna go down and out and uh, he's gonna receive the ball and then get separated from the ball by a defender with a good clean hit. So right here, ball's in the air right here, and the defender's up, and as you can see, I'm sorry, the receiver's up in the air, and as you can see, this defender's already targeting low, which is exactly what we want to see. In this case, all you want to do is separate the wide receiver from the ball so you can go from this line here the whole way down to the ground and serve the same purpose of separating him from the ball if you time it correctly so I'm going to rewind it back and play it in full speed so you can see it in full speed first you can see the clear hit on the shoulder which separates him from the ball shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact, shoulder-to-chest contact, which separates the wide receiver from the ball and serves the same intention of hitting him up high. It separates him from the ball. We have an incomplete pass. We have a good clean hit. We have no targeting, and it's and it's a big hit, okay? So so that those fallacies of, that we're taking the big hits out of the game, we're not taking the big hits out of the game. Uh, this this uh, defensive back puts a nice punishing hit on the receiver, separates him from the ball, no targeting, and this is another example of not targeting. All right, 
this play we're going to have a punt and we're going to have a target on the return on a uh, on a member of now the kicking team who's going to make a tackle and you, you'll see from this this play that the person making the block has zero intentions he launches directly into this player and who I want you to take a look at is number seven right here okay his eyes are focused solely on the runner right here so officials how are we can officiate this play we have a deep wing who is a field judge right here who's looking at the runner okay so this is where we have reverse mecha mechanics as the officials we have a line judge here who's who's getting everything in the front so line judge if you're coming down and looking at this play and you're seeing this runner coming down your sideline and you see someone like this who's just looking solely at the runner with his chest towards the sideline you're, there should be a uh, the light bulb that goes in your head that you have a potential for this receiver this defender right here to get blown up and as you'll see in full speed he comes in and gets demolished I mean number this gentleman right here leaves his feet okay and again, as we've seen in past plays, you can still have big hits if you target in this area. But as you will see here, is when I slow it down, he targets him with the crown of his helmet right here into the chin of this player. Okay, it is a clear target. I would support an ejection on this play because he has nothing to do but punish and hurt that number seven on the white team he launches his body and that's just that is not you know just because you launch doesn't make it targeting but is a good indicator of what the intentions of the of the person making the hit who's doing so let's watch this again in full speed again and we'll slow it down right at the hit ducks his head hits him square in the head above the shoulders def clear definition of targeting we have uh, we should have a flag on this play with an ejection remember what I tell to you about have a discussion with them one or two other members of your crew prior to throwing this person out but again another play where we have uh, have a target and uh, I, I would support 100% ejection in this matter All right, it's my understanding this play got uh, plenty of airtime via Twitter Twitter uh, this past weekend, and uh, I wanted to you know show this as a good teaching tool. This is again targeting with an ejection um, that should have been called. I, I the, uh, must give credit to the line judge; he did call targeting, um, but uh, I would support 100% an ejection in this matter because, uh, as you will see, we'll show the play. You have a uh, a pass to this receiver right out of here, and you can see right here he's he's eyeing him up, okay. And you know we got we got a line judge here who's you know taking a peek at this runner. We have a uh, a field judge who's watching this right uh, this action in here. But once the ball's in the air, you know he should be looking through these players into you know maybe helping out. And we also have an umpire who's looking. You know through this area and here I know there's a lot of drawings on the screen I'll get rid of them but what, what we have is we have we have potential for many people to help out this line judge in this case and, and bring him information but uh, what you'll see is we'll, we'll show it right away he blows him up separates him from the ball and it's a uh, unfortunately it's a target okay and what you'll see here is the contact go right to the head area snaps the uh, the offensive uh, players helmet back ball comes loose we have an incomplete pass. Okay, the uh, he did not he did not have possession long enough. He caught it barely, got one step down. Uh, philosophy was officials no cheap turnovers here. Make them earn it. Uh, bang bang play like here. We're gonna wipe this out every time for an incomplete pass. But again, this is a target. You know he 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 launches. You know, look at the way uh, you know he crouches and launches. You know. When, whenever you have a a uh, defender like that in that vertical forward lean towards a defender like that, um, that's that's a good indicator that you know he's out to punish. So what could this defender done to uh, not get targeting? He has all of this area to hit right here, 
and I'm fairly certain that if he hits him in the uh, waist area, the same result will happen. The running back will not be able to hold on to the ball because the uh, defender will put his, you know, defender hits him right as he's catching the ball. We'll still have that incomplete pass, but, uh, you know, again, guys, these are the hits we got to get out of these games. You know, 5, 10, 15 years ago, these were legal hits. Unfortunately, the way the rules are written today, these are not legal hits. We're here to protect the kids and, you know, with all, everything coming out with concussions and, you know, how it's it's damaging people in the future. I, I, I'm for the safety of the players and I, I, again, will fully support officials on plays like this if you just, when you, you call targeting and you decide to qual- disqualify them. We got to get the players and the coaches to start lowering that target zone in this torso area now to uh, to get away from hitting with the head. And it's not only for the safety of this player here, but uh, again, you know, you start leading with your helmet here, and then uh, it's going to hurt the uh, the defense too. But one last time, target, and you can see. Official throws the flag here. You know he he does call targeting, and uh, it's it's what we want called. But again, these are the hits we want out of the game. These are targets. These are uh, these are ejectable offenses. So I hope that if any coaches are watching this video, you know you, you take this serious. You show this to your players. And again, if you have any questions on any of these plays, feel free to call me. That wraps up the uh, fifth installment of the Eastern Football Conference training videos. I hope uh, officials, coaches, and players were able to get something out of this video about uh, what is a target, what's going to happen if the target is flagrant, meaning you will be disqualified, how the officials should handle a situation if you are going to disqualify a player for targeting. You know, Again, don't make the decision on your own. Go talk to one of the other officials who may have information to help you. And if you on that crew have information that could help the official stand up and make the call. Okay, that's why we're out there. We're out there to get the calls right. It doesn't matter if you're not the person who threw the flag. If you have information to bring to the table that could help the official be a crew saver and do that. Okay? That's all I'll say about that. Um, again, I will support safety fouls all the way. We got to get these targeting hits out of the game. We want, again, coaches and players to start targeting the chest, torso area, and on tackles, you have from the shoulders and below to make the tackle. So start you know, targeting that area, and you will be safe from any of these targeting or illegal helmet contact fouls. If you have any questions on these matters or you know there's something that you would like me to explain more or uh, more philosophy wise you all have my email address feel free to email me I'm here to help you um, be able to be able to get these plays right and for uh, and if you're interested and you have not uh, seen any of my other training videos there are there are four other ones if you go to my uh, website d7officials.com and uh, on the top there's a training video tab there is uh, there's there are four other training videos none of them deal specifically on targeting like this uh, this video does but uh, you know that they are to help you officiate they are help you to be able to break down plays and help you to get in the correct mechanical position because I'm, I'm a big proponent on if you're in the right position we all have fairly good judgment to where we're going to make the calls right so you know games start this Saturday or I'm sorry this Friday with week zero games and then you know everyone gets rolling in week one the following week so um, it's time to tighten up the shoelaces uh, you know shine up the shoes it's it's game time. We've been waiting since the end of last season to to get ready for this. And you know, if you're like me, I'm ready to get out in the field. I'm ready for these games to be real. The uh, you know the excitement of Friday night games. There's nothing like it. And uh, you know, you should you should be excited. So best of luck to you, um, coaches, players, officials, throughout the season. I'll put out a few more during the season. But again, uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Have a great year, fellas.